Okay, here we are on our board. We're ready to start a new chapter. We're going to go on to chapter six. So um, today we have actually two sections because sometimes um, if we're on this accelerated daily schedule, um, we'll have two sections sometimes. Uh, other days we might have one section that we do. Um, and then if you're on the other schedule, then you'll just do one section at a time. That might not make sense to y'all, but it does to me and I had to say it out loud. So anyway, and also I want to keep this on a second schedule, on a, on a kind of a, oh, I want to do these lessons now a little bit more general because um, I'm hoping that I might be able to teach a few other kiddos. I don't know, um, but I want to keep these uh, so that I can keep these videos on my computer in case I need to share them with someone. So anyway, okay. So today we're going to start and we have two sections we're doing, which means we have two work text sheets that we're doing. We're doing, uh, in chapter six, we're doing section 6.1. And I'll do it first. I'll do you an explanation, give you the assignment, but then you have to do you have to do 6.2 today as well. But I'm going to put that in another video. So okay, so let's look in your book. Um, it's the beginning of chapter six, which should be page 135. It doesn't have the page on there, but it's more with fractions or using fractions. Now, I have to tell you that this chapter is really short. In fact, we'll finish it in the next few lessons. This is multiple, multiplying and dividing fractions, which is actually pretty much easier than addition or subtraction. The main reason why is because you do not have to have common denominators, so it makes it easier. So let's look where it says more with fractions. Now it's time to take a look at multiplying fractions. While you probably already know how to multiply fractions, hopefully our exploration will help you understand better what we're really doing when we multiply. So basically we're gonna figure out the why and then we're gonna do it. Now here's what we do when we multiply. I'm following the page in your book, but a lot of times I'll get off of it, but a lot of times I'll be in it. So what we're doing when we multiply. As we've already explored multiplication is a way of representing repeated additions of taking one quantity a certain number of times. Thus, three times half means half taken three times. So look at those cupcakes there, half cupcakes or muffins, whatever those are. So basically we say half plus half plus half equals three halves, but that is improper, three halves is. So remember we have to, if we have an improper fraction like three halves, we can't leave it improper. This is the same as saying how many times, because remember this is also division. We look at fractions in two ways. Not only are they division, but they also represent a quantity. So two goes into three, how many whole times? One, with how many left over? Half, okay? These are the same. This is an improper, this is mixed. All right, so basically, a shortcut for rather than saying half plus half plus half, you could just do this, three, times half, okay, to represent the quantity of those uh, muffins or cupcakes. Now this can be a little trickier to see when our multiplier is a fraction, such as if we wanted to take one half times one half. I'm in the bottom of page 135. When we have a fraction as our multiplier, we are taking the quantity of a partial number of times. What would that mean? Well, when you think about it, all multiplication can be thought of in terms of of. So let's just say this now. When you see this word in math, you know automatically it means multiplication, okay? So let's uh, figure out what all that means. Let me erase all of this first, and then we'll finish reading. Okay, so let's go back. Um, we're at the bottom of page 135. All right, so when you think about it, all multiplication can be thought of in terms of of. When we multiply six times five, we're taking six sets of five. When we multiply three times half, we're taking three sets of half. So viewing multiplication this way helps us make sense out of multiplication when our multiplier is a fraction. Now look at the next page, we're on 136. Now here we have a muffin, half a muffin, and we're gonna half it. So if we take half of a half, we end up with a quarter of a whole, okay? Now, 
here's three muffins. If we take half of three, we end up with one and a half whole. So half of three is the same as saying half times three, you get one and a half. Now, if we take five sixths of a half, we end up with five twelfths of a whole. Notice that when a partial quantity is our multiplier, our product, remember that's your answer, is a smaller quantity instead of a larger. This is because we're taking the quantity a partial number of times. Remember that multiplication is commutative. So one half times three results the same quantity as three times one half. It doesn't matter how you do it. That's what we talked about several days ago. Now let's go to where it says getting to a rule. Now the rule for multiplying fractions is to multiply the numerators and the denominators. So here they have you an example, five six times one half. Basically you just go across, five times one is five, six times two is 12. There you go, when multiplying a whole number by a fraction, think of the whole number as having one as its denominator. Now here's on the screen, I wanna show you this. So if you have three, and this is the one we used a while ago, if we have three times one half. Now, I want you to go ahead and put this in your mind forever and ever and ever and ever. When you have a whole number and you need to think of it in terms of a fraction, always think of it as this. It's over one. Now, here's why. Because if you, remember the denominator tells us how many pieces in, or how many parts of a whole Okay, and this tells us how many there are, like how many are missing or how many are gone or whatever, okay? This would be like three, well, I don't know how you say it, but if you have a one whole pizza divided into three parts and three are gone, it's, or three are there, it's the whole pizza. So anytime, I don't care what number, it could be 10. If you need to think of it in terms of a fraction, always think of it like that. Doesn't matter what number it is, any number, over what could be one billion. Over one is the same as just one billion. Okay, so always think of it in terms like that when you need to think of a whole number in terms of a fraction. All right, let's look at the top of 137. We don't necessarily have to bother to rewrite the whole number as a fraction. Just remember to view it with one as the denominator. So while the mathematical proof of why we can multiply fractions by multiplying the numerators and denominators is beyond the scope of this course, we can see in general that it makes sense. It's obvious to see why it gives us the correct answer in simple cases like three times half and three times one is doing the same thing as adding up the numerators. Um, adding up the numerators in one half plus one half plus one half would. The obvious answer is three halves, which simplifies to one and half. But what about five six of one half? Why does multiplying the numerators and denominators here give us the correct answer? Remember, while we often use fractions to represent partial quantities, they're also a way of writing division. Thus, five sixth means five divided by six. So to take five six of a quantity, like to find out if we'd have to look, if we took five six of it, we need to divide the quantity by six which we can do by multiplying the denominator by six, and then take five of those parts, which we can do by multiplying the numerator by five. Now, all that kind of sounds like blah, blah, blah. So here's where it's gonna show you. And now I'm gonna write it on the board, but it's actually on your in your book. It's in the middle of page 137. So we're gonna take five, six times one half. Okay, now you just multiply across five, now that's the correct answer, and that's easy. You just multiply across, but this wants you to see why. Now look right below that in your book. There's half, and you're gonna divide half by six, and then you're gonna multiply that by five, and so that gives you five twelfths. So basically what we're saying is we're taking half times six, six halves, and then multiplying that by five. So that's where you get five twelfths. Now look at the gray box. Remember I told you that? That's where you always need to pay attention. One of the neat things about fractions is that we can view them both as an operation, a division, and a quantity, the result of that division. 
While we pictured fractions as partial quantities in order to understand multiplication better, know that each of the fractions we looked at was still representing division two. Okay, now let's move on to fractions in music. Did you realize that music utilizes fractions? Well, it does. Hum any tune. Notice that we linger on some notes longer than others. Let's think of maybe an old hymn. Um, how about uh, Come Thou Fount? Uh, I'm horrible at that, but you see what I'm saying? You, each little note has a different uh, length to it. You have to know, musicians have to know how long to hold each note. So they use different notes to specify different lengths of time. The notes are based on a consistent rhythm called a beat. When you clap your hands to a song, you are clapping the beat of a song. The symbol, called a whole note, is most commonly used to refer to four beats. All right, so let's turn the page. I'm gonna to have to pause this just for a second because I have to braid someone's hair. Okay, I'm back, I had to braid hair. Let's look at the top of 138. We're still talking about music notes. A variety of other notes represent a fraction of the whole note. So when a whole note is worth four beats, a half note then would be worth two beats. Sorry, I had to pause it again for a second. All right, so when a whole note is worth four beats, then a half note is worth two beats. So, because half of four is two. A quarter note is worth one beat, one fourth of four is one, and an eighth note is worth half of a beat. On the other hand, if the whole note is worth eight beats, then the half note is worth four beats, because half of eight is four, and so on for the other notes. So there's your picture of one. Whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, and eighth notes. It depends on what the whole note is worth, Depend, and, and that's what makes, depends on you know the other notes, what they're worth. Notice all the times we use the word of. You could substitute multiplication for each one. The application of fractions in music is just one example of how we can use math to help us praise the Lord, serve and encourage others, and simply refresh ourselves. Let's look at the keeping perspective. Today we looked at multiplication again at the consistent way even partial quantities multiply. Let's pause for a moment and consider the one holding all this together. Day in and day out, Jesus is holding everything together so consistently that we can develop methods based on that consistency to work with fractions. Is anything too hard for him? Of course not. God is perfectly capable of doing everything he says he will do in his word. Jeremiah 32, 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? We know the answer to that one. All right, so let's look then at uh, worksheet 6.2. Um, I'm hoping I don't need to have this on the screen. I'm hoping we can just work through it. No, 6.1, I'm sorry, not, not 2, 6.1. Now there's a front and a back. Um, generally the back of the page, not always, but generally, or at least part of it, is usually a review of some sort. All right, so let me erase this on the screen just in case I haven't even looked at the page yet. I may not even need to help you. I just wanna make sure you know where we are. All right, so up at the top, and oh, and you, you can get your calculator ready because you'll be using it on the back page. Now, in addition to the prime number list through 100, you've been given, uh, remember we talked about prime numbers the other day, you'll have to know that 227 is a prime number. So of course that one's over 100, so we have to know that one. I think they told us that in the last, oh yeah, the other lesson, uh, lesson 5.7, they told us that 293 is also a prime number. Now let's practice this skill. It says, look at 1A, I'm gonna put this on the board. You've got two thirds, um, times four-fifths. Now, the directions say multiply the following numbers. Remember, multiplication, doesn't matter what the bottom numbers are, just psh, psh, multiply right across. All right? Now, look at number two where it says under, understanding check. It says write a sentence describing what each of these problems means and then solve it. For instance, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna use one of those, but let's just say you have one and one fourth as one of the problems. And it says to write a sentence describing what this means. 
Okay, so what actually will they put? They put this in here. So if you had to write a sentence explaining what this means, you would write um, something like, um, uh, you would say one, or whatever the whole number is, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the fraction, however many times, one-fourth, one time, or what is two-fourths, three times, or whatever the fraction is. What is this, this many times? That's what that means on 2A and 2B. All right, on number three, um, the answer is going to be most likely in the little section we read about the music. And then cooking, I'm thinking that y'all can probably do that yourself. Uh, the back page, there's a discount section, and then six and seven are both uh, just um, reviews of what we've been doing. So I'm trying, I think I am going to grade this page. I haven't graded a page in a while other than your, your uh, quiz. If you have trouble with this page, let me know. Otherwise, um, we'll just, when we turn this in, we'll give it a grade. Now, I'm going to end this lesson, but you still need to go and do section 6.2 today as well.